Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to How to Date an African Man podcast here on Spreaker. This broadcast will be distributed to Spotify as well as iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Now, let me re-emphasize, and I'm going to do this before every, every episode and every video I do in general. Okay, I am a black American woman that has dated different kinds of African men since I was 15 years old. And I've even married a Senegalese Muslim man for six years. I've known him 10. My first son's father was also a Senegalese Muslim man as well. I used to attend a Ghanaian church for three to four years. Then I went to a Nigerian church for three to four years. I went all over. I've been going to so many celebrations. I'm just crazy about the African culture in general. I'm obsessed. Okay, that's my confession. (laughs) All right, so the purpose of this channel, the purpose of these podcasts um, is to inform my American ladies on how to avoid common pitfalls in connecting and dating African men and meet a quality guy. Now, African ladies already know how to handle their men and the strategies that I will be talking about, you know, and my videos will really sound strange. Okay. Um, so anyway, moving on to the topic of today's episode, which is the pros of dating African men in the USA, UK, or Canada versus overseas. Um, let me start by saying that there are quality men in Africa. But ladies, you really want to date. You really want to look first where you are. If you're in the USA, if you're in UK or Canada, look where you are first. There are millions of African men there. Okay, so listen closely to what I'm going to say next. Okay, so I'm going to talk about our American sisters. Many of our American ladies are going on vacation to Africa and meeting, they start to meet and they start to date a guy. They come back to the USA from vacation and continue the long distance relationship later after they, you know, fall in love, they decide to help get their man a tourist B2 visiting visa here or either they go to Africa and marry the guy and then come back over here to the USA and start filing for the green card papers under the impression of love. There are a lot of mistakes in doing it this way. Number one, ladies, you don't know this guy. You don't really know this guy. All you can see is the swag smoke. That African swag smoke. Oh my goodness. And if you can't see through the swag smoke into his intentions, then my sister, you are doomed for issues once he's abroad. Secondly, you cannot really rely on his family and friends to tell you the truth about how he really is. They are rooting for him to get to the USA. Look at it. It benefits his family in a way. Because once he gets over here, he can start working and he can send money back to them. Okay? So on this channel, ladies, I encourage you, those in America, those in the US, UK, and Canada, um, look for quality men where you are and look for quality men that have their act together why because it takes the guessing it takes out the guessing on if he's using you for the green card or whatever else you know what i'm saying get a quality man that has his act together now i spoke to an immigration officer here i believe they call them uscis officer here in New York City. Well, when I was in the city, Metro New York, I'm now in Buffalo, New York, but when I was in the city, um, I met up with an officer and um, that officer told me some crazy stories. 
he told me about many couples that break up right in his office after it was disclosed, you know, some hidden secrets were disclosed about, you know, the other party that that particular person brought um, to the USA. OK, and it was drama. He talked he talked about the drama that he was um, witnessing, you know, in his office during these immigration interviews. OK, so the lady who brought the man over didn't know that, oh, he had this going on. He had that. How the officer knew this? I don't know, because, you know, uh I have not seen any type of databases, reliable databases in Africa to even do any type of search on the background. So, you know, anyway, they have their own tricks and tactics. But anyway, he said that a lot of secrets were exposed in those immigration interviews. Now, um, I want to talk about the pros of dating a man. And OK, I repeated that already. Sorry. The pros of really focusing on an African guy here in the USA or if you're in the UK or Canada. Number one, he's in close proximity. And this allows you to be around him. Um, This allows you to go on dates to see how he is. Um, Like I said, if you get a guy from overseas, you are only relying on what he and his family tells you and what you assume. You cannot really see if he's truly quality. All right. Number two, your discernment is much better if you get an African man here in the USA. You will be going by your gut and it will be easier. Um, And you will be able to see things for what they are. Number three, you have... Very good investigative tools here and the USA as well as UK and Canada has very good investigative tools where you can do a background check. Background check is so crucial. Women fight me over this one. Women fight me over this one. My sisters fight me over this one because they don't want to find out nothing. They don't want to really see if this guy is really quality. They rather assume. So I do get, um, <laughs> I do get in a fight over this. Um, but it's up to you, you know. If you don't want to do the search, it's up to you. But for me, I need to make sure that I'm not winding up with a smooth talking liar. Okay. I need to make sure that, and like I said in my other video, my, um. My first son's father, I found out several years after I broke up with him when I was trying to get some support that he was a he was a thief and a robber and mug shots. I started seeing mug shots pop up on Google and I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And let me tell you, an American man approached me um, several months back and he he looked like he had everything together. He wanted to start dating me. And, um, you know, he was um, from New York, but he was living in Atlanta. And then he was coming back to New York. And I was thinking about it. I was like, yes, you know, he got everything together. But I said, you know what? Let me not be let me not be fooled. Let me run his name through the database. And lo and behold, an article popped up that he beat his, it was a newspaper article that he beat his ex-girlfriend to a pulp. She, she had to fill her way to the neighbor's house to get help. He beat her so bad in front of two kids that was, one was two years old, the other one was three years old. Imagine I said, you know what, this guy is so nice. You know what, I ain't going to do no research on him because I don't want to go looking for nothing because I don't want to find nothing. I would, I might be dead today. I, I know I would be next for sure. So that's why it's so important not to, not to just assume, you know, to try to get all the facts from the get go so you don't get hurt later on. You know what I'm saying? So, um, ladies, That's all I wanted to say um, 
today and I'm wrapping this podcast up. I'm going to put some links to my blog. It's called, uh, I had another name for my blog. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry guys. Datingafricanmen.blogspot.com Alright, check out my blog. And I put some links to my other social media platforms below the YouTube video. Because I can't really do it with the Spreaker. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you have a great day.